May we now call this meeting to order. Visitors and friends, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to another lecture given by the Springfield, Ohio Bible class. This is a school and it is not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Springfield branch was established in the year 1935. The president here in Springfield, Ohio is Dr. Rhonda Miller. The vice president is Dr. Gurley Ramey. And the dean is Dr. Ronald Carr. In this school, we use the true, correct, original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and it has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim, and it has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, and it has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and that there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title. But unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means Elohim is a title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. <coughs> now Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His state He is inscrutable and incomprehensible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. Now we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart 
to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being. That is having shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Then later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses a top Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. Also in this school we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern. And that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Bible class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons 
or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua and chill to inherit eternal life. Now, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state, our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll begin by having a prayer by Dr. Lester Emery, a selection from the New Jerusalem Singers, and scriptures by Dr. Michelle Simmons. Dr. Emery. Good evening, class. Good evening. Let us bow our hearts and minds in a moment of reverence. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we thank you for permitting us to assemble once again that we may learn of you as you really are and as you actually exist. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that you bestowed upon us when you delivered this vision unto us. We ask that as the speakers come forth, that you do the speaking. And we ask that as we sit on our seats, you humble our hearts, that we may hear and see more perfectly. All these blessings we ask in the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Let the assembly say, Hallelujah.
Good evening. Good, evening. Good evening. For the scripture lesson this evening, I'll be reading 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I'll be reading that from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments. Critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association. That's 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Elohim. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the spirit of this age hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of the Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but the Messiah Yahshua, the Savior, and ourselves your <coughs> servants for Yahshua's sake. For Yahweh, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh in the face of Yahshua the Messiah. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed always bearing about in the body the dying of Yahshua, that the life also of Yahshua might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Yahshua's sake, that the life also of Yahshua might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We, having the same spirit of faith, According as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up Yahshua shall raise up, up us also by Yahshua, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of Yahweh. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That was 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Thank you, uh, Dr. Embry and the New Jerusalem Singers and Dr. Michelle Simmons. Before we call on our first speaker, we'd like to remind everyone to please silence all electronic devices. Now it's an honor and a pleasure to call on for our first speaker. We'd like to call on Dr. Frank Lewis. Dr. Lewis.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I'm always thankful, happy, and glad to be in class. And uh, thankful for this great divine vision and revelation. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's a blessing to be in school. Right. And to hear the things that we've uh, learned since coming down to this school. And we always like to emphasize that this is a school and not a church. Mm -hmm. And it came by way of a divine vision revelation given by the King of the in 1931. And if it's taught like the way the Holy Spirit taught it through him, right. there ain't no body, no spirit, no one yet to this proof, this divine vision and revelation. He said what really happened, he received Joshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this school is full of mysteries. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and it puts the whole Bible together in an easy uh, way to understand. Uh, and I'll say this, that, uh, uh, well, uh, it took Moses on the third trip uh, on the mount to see how Adam was deceived. Or no, Eve, Eve was, was deceived. deceived. Yeah. <laughs> the story about Adam and Eve. Right. Uh, because you read in 1 Timothy 2.14 that Adam was not deceived, mm -hmm. but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Mm -hmm. And people get the idea, well, then Adam didn't transgress. But that's not what the Bible shows. <clears throat> but the ma major point is there, it was the third trip, which the first trip, when Yahweh's speaking the law down, uh, he, it's, a, not, it's from a cloud without any discernible shape and form. Mm -hmm. And then the second trip is when uh, Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders saw Yahweh Elohim. See, so that's having a vision of the creation and this pattern. He comes down and sees that he's the book of life. It comes down, he has the first table of stone, and he breaks that first table of stone. Uh, Moses waxes hot because he doesn't understand. Why did they build a golden calf? That don't make no sense. Well, he had to do out two more tables of stone and go back up. Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, see a rerun of the creation uh, because he left some things out in the first uh, chapter. And, uh, and uh, some of the things in the, well, <clears throat> some of the things in the first chapter that he saw, uh, he only wrote about Elohim in the first chapter. Mm -hmm. It also says that uh, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Yeah. And then uh, it looks like the creation took six days. Mm -hmm. And the seventh day he rested. <coughs> because that's what you read. Mm -hmm. But uh, read Genesis 2 and 4, King James, and 2 and 1, by the name of God. Now, so after he saw a rerun of the creation, then that's when he sees, uh, uh, after that Genesis second chapter, he writes, that's when he sees the woman being deceived by the serpent. Mm -hmm. Didn't know nothing else, right. didn't know nothing about that before. You know? Uh, read on. Genesis 2 and 4. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth. See, now it's and heavens and the earth. It's plural right. now. Right. And we learned in this school that there's three heavens. <laughs> oh boy, there's a lot of stuff. But why is that? Because it's a pattern there. That's right. And so, uh, you know, you have a first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. Plus, it's in the Bible. Read on, please. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh Elohim made the earth in and the, the day heavens. Yahweh made the earth and the heavens. Right. So uh, we find out that just like it says here, Yahweh is spirit manifesting within the clouds, symbolizing eternity. So uh, that day is the is the day of eternity. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when the creation was created. And, uh, and, and, you know, people get really big numbers. And you listen to one of those lectures from Dr. Kinley, and they said that, that the creation is so many billion years old, or it's, or it's trillion years old. And Dr. Kinley said, they still, that's, that still ain't enough. <laughs> because when you're talking about eternity, you can't put no number on that, can you? 
That's right. And so you see that he starts using Yahweh Elohim. Yes. You understand? Yeah. So he was so that third trip's really representing a revelation or Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Because what happens when he comes down at that second table of stone, the second table of stone is put in the Ark of the Covenant. Right. Just like after Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, he's going to pour out the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You understand? All right. Mm -hmm. And it's the Holy Spirit that, uh, well, that's what pointed out uh, that serpent. And then, see, the Bible don't tell you who the serpent is until you go to Revelation that's right. there. That's right. uh, 12 and 7 when it says and there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon prevailed and dragon fought in his angels right. and prevailed not. Right. Neither was their uh, uh, their place. Right. Neither was their place anymore in heaven. Right. So it said there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, and it's we well, read on please. From there. And that great and that great dragon was cast and out. The great dragon was the ten. Cast out. What's that? Cast that, out. That old serpent. Uh huh. Called that old devil. serpent. What right. old serpent? This this one right here. <laughs> See, he he's John's writing about this over here. Right. Uh, See, there were sixty three generations from uh, Adam to Joshua. So that's generations of the flesh. Right. Then when he nails the flesh to the cross, see, 63 years later, that's when John's on the Isle of Patmos getting the revelation. Mm -hmm. And you see how that through his death, burial, resurrection, you see how he resurrected a spirit body mm -hmm. and also opened up so you can see things inside. That's right. You understand? Yeah. yeah. And see right here he has his arms folded where right. the mysteries are locked up. That's right. You understand? Yeah. But now since Joshua's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, then he's got John on the Isle of Patmos. He's over there. And look how they're seeing the same thing. Right. Moses sees Elohim right. pattern, Elohim creation. Mm -hmm. And John sees <coughs> Elohim pattern, Elohim creation. Mm -hmm. See how they're confirming one another? Right, yeah. See, uh, so so he's looking back and he says, that old serpent, mm -hmm. <laughs> that one clear back there, <laughs> you understand, that, 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 that deceived Eve, yeah. you see? Mm -hmm. and, and it says that old, that dragon was cast out, that old serpent mm -hmm. called the devil and Satan, mm -hmm. uh, which deceived the whole he world. He deceived the whole world. Read. He was cast out into the earth, uh -huh. and his angels was cast out with now him. Now he's cast out on the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. And the Holy Spirit through Dr. Kinley said, uh, well, they ain't angels no more. They've been to Moses. Right. <laughs> they are standing there cast out right. into the earth plane. Right. And one of the great mysteries is, where is it? Where are they? They are standing where angels are ministering spirits. Right. Right. So they're over there. Uh, they're just like he, uh, you read in the, was it the third, read the, read tw 12 and uh, 3 or 4, where it talks about, I saw another one. Mm -hmm. Well, you might as well read 12 and 1. <laughs> uh, that's... Read 12 and 1, but if it's the holy name, it'll be 12 and 2. Mm -hmm. For some reason, he likes to throw that last verse of 11 mm -hmm. into 12. Yeah. This is the holy name Bible, Revelations yeah. 12 and 2. Uh -huh. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Yes, now he sees a, a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Now, on, on the chart here, mm -hmm. uh, he's got it right here, a woman clothed with the sun, right there, and yeah. the, the dragons over there persecuting. Mm -hmm. See, uh, he's got it right here. Yeah. You understand? He even has a 12 of 1, see? It's all you're right up here. It's all telling us what to preach on. Right. Yep. <laughs> there, there's, there it is right there. Uh -huh. A woman clothed with the sun and see, the moon under her feet. See, he poured out the Holy Spirit, and, and, uh, and when he poured out the Holy Spirit, since they're filled with the Holy Spirit, that's a woman clothed with the sun. Right. Read. And the moon under her feet, because Yahshua the Messiah uh, fulfilled the law. So they're no longer, see right here when they see Yahweh Elohim? Mm -hmm. You see how they're under the moon? 
They're under the law because Yahweh done spoke the law back there. You understand? But now the moon's under her feet because Yahshua fulfilled it and they're no longer under that law of sin and death. Read. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. See? You see how you got the sun, moon, and stars there? Mm -hmm. Now, that's what happened on the fourth day of creation. Mm -hmm. See? Well, where John is, uh, and where we are, that's in the fourth age. So you see where it had a sun, moon, and stars in Moses' vision? And then here's a woman clothed with the sun receiving the Holy Spirit. And, the, and, and she's clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. One time Dr. Kinley said, that was a long-legged woman. <laughs> you know, be clothed in the sun <laughs> and the moon under her feet. <laughs> <laughs> and a crown of 12 stars. Yeah. You got the sun, moon, and the stars there, see? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, read on. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. See, they were born again there. See? Read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Now there's another wonder in heaven. <laughs> and behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. And see, this that was the last chart Dr. Kinley had made. See, and he talks about a great red dragon. Read. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. <laughs> uh, well, just like when he saw in the first chapter, uh, John sees uh, Yahweh Elohim stand, this only begotten son, mm -hmm. Yahshua, stand in the midst of right. a seven breath. Standing in the midst of the seven branch lampstand. Mm -hmm. So where the uh, where Yahweh is enlightening his creatures uh, through the seven uh, ages and the seven dispensations. Yeah. Right. So what's the devil going to do? He's going to be deceiving seven days a week. Oh, yeah. So he got a seven too. Yeah. Got that from the transcript too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's got seven heads. And when you read Revelation 17 and 9, it talks about the seven heads on whom you see the horror sitteth are the seven mountains yeah. mm -hmm. of the great city, which is really Vatican City. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so uh, seven heads. Mm -hmm. And so, but what this one is, if you look at them, uh, the 12th chapter, well, it's up here. The 12th chapter is... Uh, it is the dragon with, wait, I don't know. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you might be able to see that because you're blunt, this thing blocks it. But anyway, I don't know. But anyway, you got a seven branch, uh, or you got a, a great red dragon okay. with seven heads. Mm -hmm. See, read on. And, and ten his horns. tail, and his tail drew the third part of and the And the crowns were upon the horns, weren't there? Or was it heads? Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Seven crowns upon his head. See? Read. And his tail drew the third part of the stars. Now he's got written up there that that's uh, pagan Rome. Well, it's close to that pagan <laughs> But it's, you can see, he lines it up. So when you see Papal Rome, Pagan Rome, and the, the beast in Revelation, the seven, I mean, Daniel, the seventh chapter, and then here you've got that, that, that same, uh, uh, that, that red dragon. Yeah. That's Pagan Rome, but you know Pagan Rome wasn't back there. <laughs> yeah. When his tail drew a one-third part of the stars. And see, you see here, uh, well, he ain't got it there, but he's got it here. Uh, you see how it was a dragon, but it was cast out, that old serpent? Right. And look how he's got the red serpent coming out. Yeah. See, he yeah. got a crown around his head. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And got 666. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, now that's something that the school can point out, and did point out, the Holy Spirit through Dr. Kimmel yeah. mm -hmm. in 1961. I mean, he done got a picture of the Pope. Yeah. He got yeah. 666 yeah. on his forehead and on his hand. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and tells him, uh, well, because always, 
There's always a lot to talk about, you know? <laughs> uh, so his tail drew a one-third part of the stars, and that's showing that uh, the lie that he told here, see, uh, it drew one-third of the angelic host. Right. And they were deceived, and then that's what caused that war. And then they're cast out, <coughs> never to return. And what the purpose of Yahweh is, is that he's got mankind made in his image and likeness, and he's saving souls mm -hmm. to right. take place of the ones that are cast out. All right. And since you've, uh, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, just as we born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's right. In other words, that's your future existence is to receive an immortal glorified body. Yeah, yeah. If you, and that's why you want to receive the Holy Spirit. Because receiving the Holy Spirit is your is your way to get an immortal glorified body right, and be right. one of his angels throughout mm -hmm. eternity. Yeah. So that's uh and so that's how well, it's just beautiful what this teaching uh, uh yeah. things we're learning when we come down here. Yeah. Right. See <clears throat> And see the scripture lesson. Uh, the seventh aim of this school is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, uh, Satan, uh, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through uh, the dispensations of time. In other words, ever since the deception in the garden, see, he's... he's uh, well, you can trace him because he's out there lying. Mm. <laughs> Whatever Yahweh says, yep. he says something different. Right. You understand? Yep. Like, like uh, here at the burning bush. Uh, when Moses asked him what his name was, he said, you tell the children of Israel that Yahweh. Mm. The, uh, no, he said, he said he was Ayah, yeah. Asher, yeah. Ayah. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which means I will be what I will to be. Well, the devil, uh, might as well read Isaiah 14 and 9. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Read that, please. Isaiah 14, verse 9. Uh huh. Sorry. <coughs> hell from beneath, hell from beneath is moved from thee to meet thee at thy coming. Yeah. It stirreth up the dead for thee. Now hell uh, can be likened unto the grave. Mm -hmm. And it can be and, and, and if you don't have the Holy Spirit, <coughs> see when something's dead it goes to the grave, don't it? Yeah. So before when we came into the class, we didn't know, so we were dead. And so these bodies was the graves our right. dead man was in. Right. <laughs> you understand? <Right. laughs> But thanks be to Yahweh, you can be raised from the dead right. and sitting in your seat. Uh, you know, that's the power of the gospel. All right. That's some good news there. <laughs> so it don't matter. That, that means he can take you from wherever. That's what this back here. Children of Israel being in bondage. Uh, and you see that ever since that satanic spirit, well, you read in 2 Peter 2 and 4. It said, Yahweh spared not the angels that sinned, mm -hmm. but cast them down to hell and put them in everlasting chains of darkness. Yeah. Now, when Adam, being the first son of Yahweh, when, after the uh, woman's deceit, and Adam, uh, Yah Yahweh said, don't eat. Well, you know, Genesis uh, 2, 16 and 17. It says, Yahweh Elohim commands a man, saying, of every tree of the garden, you can freely eat. Mm -hmm. But tree of knowledge of good and evil, don't eat, for the day that you do, you'll surely die. Mm -hmm. Well, the devil told her, you won't surely die, go ahead and eat. So he, he doesn't call <laughs> Yahweh a liar. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you see there's a true, pro and, there, and it is a true prophet because Adam did die in his conscience that day. Yes, right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yahweh said, the day you eat thereof, you'll surely die. But you see the lamb over his head? Yeah. See, he's covered by the lamb. Mm -hmm. Because there was a lamb slain before the fact before there's any transgression, right. he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. That's right. See, but it was manifest when he come and done it mm -hmm. physically. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so you just can't hop over the 
physical. Oh, you know, that's what some people do. Uh, sure uh, 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 we don't preach the gospel no more. You understand? We, 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 we've, uh, we've, uh, right. well, the sun go down every day, don't it? Yes, you do. <laughs> you understand? You're always preaching the gospel every day. That's right. <laughs> The uh, sun goes down every day, testifying Yahshua went down for the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. Sun's buried below the horizon, testifying Yahshua was buried. And sun rises early every morning. Mm -hmm. You have faith that's going to happen because right. it's happened every day of your life. Right. It's to establish your faith about Yahshua the Messiah and his death, burial, resurrection. See? Then the sun ascends to its zenith and then it's set. See? And it's showing that if you believe him, uh, uh, the, the gospel being preached, and you believe you can receive be, receive the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and and uh, well, he'll he'll set in your heart and mind. That's the point. Yeah. Just like the sun sets every day, yeah. he right. can set in your heart and mind if you believe. Yeah. Right. If you don't believe him, he ain't going. You know, that don't even make any sense. No. Anyway, except if you've never heard too, you know, understand? I mean, he can save souls. Because he judges the thoughts and the intents of their hearts. That's right. Mm -hmm. You understand? We ain't good. And we ain't reached everybody. You know how many people there is out there? <laughs> Eight billion people. See? Uh, hmm. Oh, we were uh, in Re read Revelation 20 and 1. Because this goes along with uh, the Revelation. Well, we didn't finish. <laughs> He's got written right here the present kingdom age, and he's got Revelation 12 and 10. Mm -hmm. We'll see when uh, uh, the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent mm -hmm. called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was cast out, and his angels were cast out with him. Well, read the 10th verse. Revelation. Holy name. Holy name, by the way. And prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Okay. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and oh. Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's right. Read on. He was cast <coughs> out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Read, please. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now when he's cast out? He hears a lot, and, and as Peter said, he was cast down to hell and put in everlasting chains of darkness. Right. And Jude has it too like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. The angels that kept not their first That's estate. Right. That means there was some that did keep their first estate. Yeah. Okay. And you know the stars represent angels. Mm -hmm. So if all the angels sinned, then they'd all be cast out. There wouldn't be no stars there. There's right. plenty of stars there. Ain't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength. And so when him demons is cast out, or when those angels were cast out, it says, Now has come salvation. Mm -hmm. So when the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah cast demons out of man's heart and mind, and you receive the Holy Spirit, that's now has come salvation. Yeah. Yeah. You see right here after his death, burial, resurrection, uh, he, he opened up heaven there. <laughs> See how heaven's there? He got heaven written here, yeah. and heaven there, and heaven all the way down to where we are. You understand? Yeah. See? Uh, because in John, 1 John 5 and 7 said there's three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. See, the Holy Spirit's in heaven. So if you have the Holy Spirit, that's yeah, where you are. That's right. You understand? <laughs> but before we come to class... We was in hell. Mm -hmm. So you see where it said hell from beneath? Yeah. Has moved to meet thee at thy coming. Mm -hmm. You understand? Uh, oh, go back to... Uh, uh, okay, you got 20, read 20. Oh, now I heard a great voice in heaven okay. saying, uh, Now has come salvation. And, and strength. strength. And the kingdom of our Elohim. And the kingdom of our Lord. Now that's why he's got it here. Because that's what happened when the Holy Spirit poured right. out on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. That opened up the kingdom. Yeah, right. You understand? Yeah. On earth. Yeah. But the kingdom had been way back here. Because, uh, matter of fact, that's the first verse on the 
uh, 4D play chart, yeah. and he usually has it on here. And he only knows verses, but there's a lot of verses usually there. <laughs> Sometimes people charts don't get finished. You understand? Right. Right. <laughs> but Matthew 25, 34, after he separated the sheep from the goats and put the sheep on the right hand, the 34th verse says, Come thou blessed and inherit the kingdom which was prepared That's right. from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. See how the kingdom been going on a long time? Yeah. yeah. See, and we read it there in Revelation. You see how, how important that revelation is that John got? Mm -hmm. uh, to look back there and to explain what happened in the angelic realm. Yeah, right. And then to say, uh, heard a great, he heard a great voice. The Holy Spirit had him... Had him hear it, remember it, and write it down. You understand? But then it took a man having a vision and revelation to explain it for us. Oh, that's right. You understand? You just didn't, you just don't climb up in here already knowing this stuff. You understand? Slip into this knowledge, understand it. No, it had to be taught to us. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So it says, uh, he heard a great, after he, uh, after he was cast out, Mm -hmm. I heard a great voice in heaven saying, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Loa and the power of his Messiah. Mm -hmm. See, there, there's power in the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's what it says in uh, Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Messiah. For it's the power of Yahweh mm -hmm. unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we talk about it just about every time we come down here. Because mm -hmm. he shows it. Mm -hmm. You understand? There's something to it. Yeah. You go to sleep every night pretty much. And if yeah. you don't, you will go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and when you go to sleep, that's the closest day to death. And you buried in the sleep, and you wake up. Mm -hmm. You might have to take a nap. So you can do a death, burial, resurrection again. Right. Going to sleep, yeah. buried in there, you wake up. You understand? Yeah. And we eat something every day. So that's to die, showing you Yahshua Messiah died. See, he sacrificed his life so that you might live. That's why some living got to die. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. then you buried in this hole in the ground. Yeah. And then, then yeah. the spirit resurrects it. The nutrients yeah. to give you life that's and the right. sins, and, you know, mm -hmm. has us continuing our life. So the gospel all right. being preached all the time. Mm -hmm. that's right. You understand? Mm -hmm. See, that's even true. washing dishes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take the dish from up, up here, put it down on the plate, it gets dirty. See, he doesn't yep. come from here, come down, took on the sin of the world upon himself. <laughs> then, you, then you put it in the dishwater there, and the dishwater is joy. <laughs> Dawn! Palmolive, yeah. sunlight! There's an all talking about him, you understand? Right. And then, then you wash it, and, and, and it comes out, and then, then, then you put it in a dish rack, and it tarries there for a while. <laughs> see, see how he tarried? That's right. And then it goes back to when it that comes from. Lord, you understand? See? <clears throat> um, okay, read Revelation 20 and 1. Revelation 20 and 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. Now, see, when that angel comes down, that's Joshua the Messiah. See, he's the angel coming down. The one that falls, that's loose for saving the devil. He's cast out. You understand? So he saw an angel come down having the key, the bottomless pit, and the great chains. And you read lectures where uh, Dr. Kinley, you know, they went back to Moses so much. People said, I'm tired of yep. going back to Moses. I'm tired of going back. Well, you're in the last book of the Bible, last chapter. One of the last chapters, 20. Yeah. 20, 21, 22, when he was showing how this shows the migratory That's right. pattern. That's right. That's right. See? And the other day, uh, uh, or Sunday, it was gone over how that one day of Yahweh is a thousand years, mm -hmm. a thousand years, one day. Matter of fact, that's what he has written on this tombstone there. Mm -hmm. See, he's got Genesis 5 and 5, Adam lived 930 years and he died. Right. And it was shown how that Yahweh Elohim told him in the day that you dove, you'll surely die. See? And then you'll find out that he he ate. And then you got some people saying, well, he didn't die, he just appeared to, just like the sun doesn't go down, it just appears to go down. I mean, I've heard that stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know. uh, <laughs> well, it turned dark. 
<laughs> you understand? When the sun goes down, don't it turn dark? Yeah. And this was the son of Yahweh, so it would come down. You know, it, it, and darkness was, and look how he got darkness all the way. Around. Well, either the satanic spirit was cast out before Adam even come in, the earth's inundated water. You see the darkness yes. all the way down? Yeah. See? Yeah. Because it's testifying that satanic spirit. He's going he's gonna to try to keep people in darkness. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's where he is. Mm -hmm. So right. he's a dragon, so he wants to drag you down <coughs> with him yeah. in, in that darkness there. Mm -hmm. See? Okay, I saw an angel come down from heaven. Read. And the key of the bottomless pit. And now, great when, when Yahshua came. come down here, didn't he have the key to get them out? Mm -hmm. You understand? Pouring out the devastating plagues. Yeah. See, uh, and, and it says a great chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. and, and Dr. Kinley showed how that uh, these dispensation ages, which are the same things you see up yeah. here. You see how these are linked together? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great chain of events. Mm -hmm. She, uh, uh, down through the law and the prophets, and shows how that the dispensation ages are linked together. That's, right. That's what he said. And he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> so I don't mind repeating what he said, but he knew what he was talking about. See, we ain't just blindly repeating either. You know, I've heard some guys like to say, Dr. Kinley's not a witness. I'm going to tell you what, he's a better witness than you are. <laughs> right. And I'm talking about I'm supposedly on the right side says that. Mm. Oh my yeah, I've heard it many times. Mm. Yeah. Yes, he is. Oh. <laughs> Matter of fact, he's the witness Yahweh had <laughs> down at the end of this age. Right. Just like and Joshua was a witness at the end of that age. Just right. like Yash, just like right. Noah was the witness right. of that age. Right. That's right. Anyway, move on. You can't study everything. But we will mention it because we do see it. Mm -hmm. Right. Read. Revelation 20 and 2. And he laid hold it's on because the Because some of the things he says in the transcripts don't go along with what you teach. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. That's why you say he ain't a witness. Anyway, move on. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent. He lays hold of that dragon, oh. that old serpent. See how he you know, didn't say it one time in the 12th chapter. He said it in the 20th chapter. All right. yeah. See, as a matter of fact, who would change Yahweh and put Lord there? Lucifer, the devil, would do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who would take Elohim and put God there? That great old dragon. Oh, right. 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 He laid hold of that great that right. dragon. That old right. serpent yeah. called the devil and Satan. Yeah. Read. That old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Yeah. And cast see, him when he, see, he laid hold. They, they took care of Pharaoh, didn't he? Did he oh, drown yeah. him in the Red Sea that day? Mm -hmm. See, yeah. they resurrected mm -hmm. through the divine waters of the Red Sea, right. but Pharaoh and his host was cast in the Red yeah. Sea. Right. So he drowned there. Yeah. He bound him that day. <laughs> you understand? With no Pharaoh bothering him then. <laughs> you understand? Yahweh. Then, but it's testifying to when Yahshua Messiah resurrected. See, when he resurrected, see, Judas had killed himself. Mm -hmm. You understand? And he, ain't re he sure didn't resurrect with Yahshua. Yeah. So he's bound that thousand years. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the day he resurrected, in other words. Mm -hmm. Where you have one day being a thousand years, this is one case where the thousand years is just one day. Yeah, right. Now that's a mystery, ain't it? Because mm -hmm. yeah, the whole world says this ain't happened yet. The whole world yeah, says this ain't happened yet. Right, right. They're, waiting, they're waiting for, oh boy, it's going to be great when we get raptured. Mm -hmm. And, and, and get, he's going to lay hold of that serpent and he's going to bound him a whole thousand years. They ain't got no vision of revelation. No, no, no. <laughs> you understand? So, you know, that's, uh, anyway. We're blessed. Right. Come down here and get an understanding yeah. of these things. Yes, Read on. And bound him a thousand years. And, and see, cast him. And, and Dr. Kinley has it in the uh, clergy pamphlet. Uh, that, see, that, that the Sanhedrin Council, they're in there trying to devise they're wondering what's, you know, they had the, they had the soldiers come right. say he did resurrect. 
Yeah. And they didn't know what to do, so they had to get together and devise yeah. a lie. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? And they were shut up that day. They mm -hmm. wasn't out there running their mouth that day. Right. You understand? And then it says they paid them money mm -hmm. to yeah. tell them that they stole Yahshua's body away. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Kimmy was yeah. real simple with that. Mm -hmm. He said, now you know that's a lie. You ever seen anybody steal this ass? <laughs> <laughs> you can't steal that one. They didn't steal his body. No. See, <laughs> too hot to handle and too far away. Right. <laughs> so it's impossible right. to steal his body away. If you can't steal this away, no. that's testifying to him. You ain't stole, stole, they didn't steal his body. No. Right. And to show the power of the resurrection, they don't see, you know, I mean, look how the stone rolls away. Right. And they say, and, and you know that, we see that all the time with people putting concrete down and, and pavement and, and then that grass busts the concrete. You understand? And busts the, showing the power that's in the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. You understand? Grass, we don't think nothing about grass. We just walk up and down on that like it ain't nothing. But you try busting concrete. You better have a sledgehammer <laughs> or some tool. You understand? See, and it's showing how he can bust this hard hand again. Yeah, that's true. You understand? And it gives it some knowledge and understanding. Yeah. <laughs> okay, read on. Revelation 20 and 3. Yeah. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more mm -hmm. till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Till the thousand years would be fulfilled. Now you read that when Yahshua Messiah died, mm -hmm. see, and, and, and was buried, <laughs> when he resurrected, well, it'll tell you that uh, there was a great earthquake. Yeah. And says, and, and many of the body, and, and the rocks rent, and the graves were open, and many of the sons which slept in the earth uh, resurrected right. uh, after his resurrection and mm -hmm. went into the holy city yeah. and appeared unto many. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now when he appeared unto many, Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 15. He said he appeared to 500 at once. Now when you get that many witnesses <laughs> seeing the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, uh -huh. uh, that will shut you up. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Talking about his resurrection. You understand? Right. Read. Uh, the, until the thousand years should be fulfilled, uh -huh. and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now, what do you mean, loosed a little season? Yeah. Well, he'd been down here deceiving from from the garden all the way down. Who do you think's causing them the uh, their 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 every thought and intent of their heart was only evil continuously? What causes you know what causes them to say, oh, that tabernacle ain't gonna stand? Yeah. Then the earth swallowed them up. You yeah. know what Dr. Gimley said about that? He said it was showed how they they were swallowed up in their carnal mind. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you wouldn't put that together. No. You understand? It takes somebody had the Holy Spirit to re, you know crack those mysteries, you know? Right. And so, and what would cause them to you know build a golden calf? You got Yahweh speaking to them. Right. Don't be, make no image of nothing. Right. Don't, wor don't worship nothing else. You right. understand? And don't have no other Elohim before me. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, you know, less than fifty days later, yeah. they done built up a golden calf. Yeah. Right. Who would cause that? Mm -hmm. Well, Revelation thirteen and one, it talks. Of, well, you might as well read that. Mm. Revelation thirteen and one. Mm-hmm. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Yeah. See, it's, it's, he's looking back, and that satanic spirit rose up out of his He was in no, Pharaoh and his boys, right. but they rose up. They kept on. They came on over. Yeah, they came on over. See how you know that? Because if water washed away sin, there wouldn't have been none with the flood. <laughs> but after he had the flood, what do you think they did? They come on over. Right. They, or they came on over. That's you understand? Right. See, and, and got and had them build the Tower of Babel yeah. right. and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. You understand? See, and you're just tracing them all the way down. Mm -hmm. Read. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, mm -hmm. and upon his horns ten crowns. See, the difference, that was pagan Rome, but was reading in the 12th chapter, 
See, they had seven heads and ten horns, but the crowns were upon his head. Now it's seven heads and ten horns, and the crowns are upon the horns. You ever say? Read. Well, no, we can't. I can't read all that. <laughs> well, there's so much talk about when you talk about the devil. And, uh, 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 boy, uh, we can't do that. Uh, let's go back to 20. Okay, uh, Revelation 20 and I'm on 4 right now. Okay. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. See, and after they went into the holy city and appeared unto men, they're ruling Jerusalem, so that's thrones. See, read. And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Judgment was given unto them. See, that's another thing we... <laughs> that's another thing a lot of people don't want to talk about. See, or don't talk about. Mm -hmm. See, people go to Matthew 7 and 1, yeah. and it says, Judge not that you should be judged. You can't judge me and my church. Mm. Well, first of all, Joshua said that to them back here. Right, right. Matthew 7 and 1, you wasn't living there. That's before he pours out the Holy right, Spirit. Right. So the reason why they can't judge each other in Israel is because all of them got demons and the only thing you'll be judging is unrighteousness. Right. Mm -hmm. Judging unrighteousness. So there ain't no good judging there. But now since the Holy Spirit's poured out, mm -hmm. he can judge whether something's yeah. right or wrong. Mm -hmm. right. You understand? Mm -hmm. and, that, and so judgment, ever since the day of Pentecost, You're in the judgment. And that's what Dr. Kinley was thinking about when he had the vision. Yeah. See, uh, he was thinking about Acts 17.30, where Paul says, at the times of this ignorance, Yahweh winked at it. He ain't poured out no Holy Spirit yet. Right. So he can wink at you being stupid about these things. Right. See? He's, but now, right. <laughs> he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he's appointed a day in which he'll judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Seeing he's given proof that he's raised him from the dead. Right. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so he was wondering, how is Joshua going to judge the world seeing nobody can agree with each other? Mm -hmm. Well, and he, he, uh, the same Holy Spirit that was poured out on the Jew and the Gentile is the, is the same Holy Spirit that gave him this vision and revelation. Right. You understand? And so this was the answer. <laughs> uh, how's he going to judge the world? Well, he's going to give a man a vision, a right. revelation, right. and send him into the world for the judgment of the world. This yeah. teaching is the judgment yes, of the world. Yeah. That's right. See, read on. Revelation and, uh, 20 and partway through 4. Okay. Sorry. Well, let's finish the other way. Part way. <laughs> and judgment was given unto them yeah. and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Joshua see and for the uh, word of one John the Baptist beheaded yeah. Yeah. and you'll read that there's one in the prophets that he was slain here see beheaded see and uh, well why was John beheaded because Moses died at the River Jordan, and that's like and that's right like the second veil, so then that's why John. You understand? It yeah. was cut off. Read on. Beheaded for the witness of Yahshua and for the word of Yahweh, mm -hmm. which had not worshipped the beast, mm -hmm. neither his image, neither had received his mark upon his forehead or in their hands. Yeah. Now see that mark in the forehead and boy. Hmm. <laughs> You saw uh, about a month ago they had the uh, Ash Wednesday, oh, yeah. and the the priest takes a takes his thumb and puts a mark right takes his right hand probably <laughs> and puts the puts the mark right on the yeah. person's yeah. forehead and they walk around proud of it. I, yeah. One time I was watching, oh, you should wash your face. <laughs> <laughs> but they proud to have their mashes up on there. You understand? Oh, yeah. They're, they're happy to have that. They ain't know where the what verse is that. <laughs> that ain't nowhere. But then you you know you'll see them do it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You don't put the Father, the Son, Holy Ghost on the cross. You're calling him dead. Yeah, right. You understand? Mm -mm. And then they tell you you need to give God ten percent of your money, and in your forehead you go. 
Yeah, I should. He's blessed me. I should. You do it with your right hand. You put your money in the plate. That's a, you're being marked there. Yeah. See? Uh, and also, uh, you, Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. So then in your forehead, yeah, Jesus did say that. And with your right hand, you over there eating the Lord's Supper. You understand? Mm -hmm. You're being marked in your forehead and in your hand. Right. What do you mean being marked? Get Romans 16, 17. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you got you're the Lone Ranger now. You got to go to work. <laughs> Romans 16, 16 and 17? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Here's the Holy now Spirit. I beseech you, brethren, uh -huh. mark them that cause divisions. Mark them that yeah. cause divisions. And offenses, and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And that's and what happened. Them. We had people, I, I, I've been to classes. We don't have to go no law on the prophets. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened is, you were taught that stupidness, and then you believed in your forehead, then you get up with your right hand and try to teach it in class. Mm -hmm. oh, you understand? Yeah. This path, this gospel, that, that ain't never saved nobody. Well, you've been mar you're marked in your forehead and in your hand by somebody that does know it will save you. That's right. You understand? Right. Yeah. See, we just don't keep it out there. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Okay, uh, keep go back to twenty. Oh no, call uh, uh, mark them that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine right. that you have learned and right. avoid them. For avoid they for they that are such serve not our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. They don't Messiah, serve Yahshua Messiah. Right. But their own belly. But their belly. They have an appetite for following somebody. Mm. Trying to think that's going to help them. Right, right. No, it ain't helping you. And by good works and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. You see how they can deceive people by the way they... You understand? Mm. And you see it out there in the world easy. Okay, uh, uh, back to 20 and uh, 5 or whatever. They're marked in their forehead and in their hands. And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. That's the day he resurrected. Read. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Well, who's the rest of the dead? See, they're the, they're the disciples okay. and the Apostle Paul. They ain't got no Holy Spirit. They're still dead. Yeah. See, and, and they, it's an after the thousand years. Didn't yeah. they have to wait 50 days later? That's after the thousand years. The thousand years is the day he resurrects. Right. And then 50 days later, that's when he pours out the Holy Spirit. That's the rest mm -hmm. of the dead. Yeah. Live not again until the thousand years were finished. Mm -hmm. Read. This is the first resurrection. Now he's calling... The resurrection here, and when he pours out the Holy Spirit, he's calling that the first resurrection. So you see, if you out there saying that that ain't happened yet, you're right. denying the resurrection. Right. Right. See how wrong that is? Yeah. Read. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Yeah, and you know what? The great mystery now, so, uh, so those, those that resurrected after his resurrection... Went into the holy city. Mm -hmm. Those he poured out the Holy Spirit. And the resurrection still going on. You can be resurrected in your heart, man. Right. Yeah. See, read. On such the second death has no power. The second death hath no power. So what's the second death? Read the 14th verse. And see, there's a lot of stuff, of course, in this. But, uh, you know. Uh, Revelation tw 20 and 12 says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Now, how's the dead stand? We yeah. see it every day. <laughs> Don't you see people standing out here? And you see them driving, too. <laughs> uh, you see them all over. Uh, and they were judged of what was written in their books, showing you're being judged. And then there was a book of life was opened. According to the and they're according to their works mm -hmm. instead of believing on him. See, read on. 13. And the sea gave up the dead which was in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Yeah. And they were judged, every man according to their works. Mm -hmm. And death and hell were cast into the lake death of fire. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. To be carnally minded is death. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then demons that have you deceived in you, they're go you and them are going to go to the lake. Right, right. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's death and hell cast into the lake of fire. Hell's not the lake. Right. See, just like heaven, it's the kingdom that's coming up of immortality. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be in heaven now. Right. Mm -hmm. See, but uh, go ahead. This is the second death. That's the second death. See, when those that are cast into the lake of fire. That's the second death. Read. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's right. So if you receive the Holy Spirit, it says the second death have no power over you. Yeah. So that's why it's important to come down here that's and receive right. the Holy Spirit. All right. So all praise go to Yahweh and to his son, Yash Messiah. Hallelujah. All right. Lewis. Now it's an honor and a pleasure to call for our second speaker. We'd like to call on Dr. Jeffrey Simmons. Dr. Simmons. I really enjoyed those things come to uh, Dr. Lewis. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I rarely say a thing like this, but that's one of those times that he could have just continued on. Because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there were just so many, uh, thank you, so many revelations uh, being brought forth. And I thought it was edified, and that's what we're here to do, to edify the body. That's, right. that's yeah. what we come down here for, to learn. Mm -hmm. about our Heavenly Father as He really is and as He actually exists. Mm -hmm. You know, and as He was talking about the, uh, 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 what's called lint, yeah. mm -hmm. when they put that ashes yeah. on their head, mm -hmm. and I was sitting there in my mind and I was watching how they do the sign of the cross, you mm -hmm. know, because they cup their hand, <coughs> so they cup their hand, then they come up here to their head, mm -hmm. they make a six, and they come over here, they make a six, they come over here, they're making a six, and they're coming back down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but it's just done real fast. Right. Mm -hmm. See, but they're just making a mark of the beast. They're just making a six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, and come back down, six, six, six. So I was looking at that when uh, uh, Dr. Lewis was mm -hmm. talking about that, you know. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I want to continue on with some of the things that uh, he was talking about there with the... Uh, to aid the dispensations, but I want to have something read for you real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I had it marked. I do, uh, and I'm I'm really having this read so to be on record uh, because they're having the uh, elections of uh, officers, uh, a couple of officers on the state board, the Ohio State Board, mm -hmm. okay. and what the Ohio State Board is doing. Uh, the last time they had an election for officers, uh, for an officer replacement of an officer was when Dr. Dorothy McNeil uh, had resigned from her position as state treasurer. And one of the requirements that they listed for uh, that position was that you had to be uh, willing to enforce the things that are coming out of Los Angeles. Uh, mm. Of course, that would eliminate me <laughs> uh, and many other people from being on, yeah. on the board yeah. because I'm not going to go along with something that I don't feel is right. right. I'm not going to do that even if you do follow along right. with right. the founder. If you say something that's incorrect, uh, that's not according to the Constitution, I'm not going to go up along with it. You know. Yeah. Now, uh, on the third of this month, they uh, were asked for... Uh, people that want to be nominated for the position of treasurer and um, I, don't, I forget what the other public position public was. Relations. Public relations. Yeah. And they have three requirements. I didn't bring my phone so I don't, I, don't, I don't have what the requirements were. One of the requirements was that you had to be 
uh, a prior in order in order to apply for the position you had to be a, held to, held this position uh, once before prior position uh, I think my, my wife has it there uh, but I'm going to read what they said the, the qualifications were mm -hmm. and there's three qualifications that they put in there now <clears throat> the problem I have with uh, the Ohio State Board see that they're, they're not being uh, nobody is, is, is managing them Nobody is making sure that they're doing what's contained within the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Even we as local officers aren't uh, ensuring that they are being fair. Right. Uh, and, and what they want to do, they want people on the board that's going to go along with the things that are coming out of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that's why there's nobody on the board that doesn't go along, uh, that, that doesn't follow the things that the founder originally taught. Everybody on the board follows the things that are taught out of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And they're making a qualification such as, if you don't agree with them, see, then uh, you're not going to be on that board. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do, for the record, I wanted to read what the qualifications are. Okay. Because they're not aware of what's in the Constitution. And if they are, there's nobody on the board to enforce it. Mm -hmm. See, and that's what we come in at, that we as officers... <laughs> She should know what's in the Constitution. Right. See, and when they bringing up things that's not constitutional, we should speak up about it. That's right. That's why I'm not on the board anymore, because I stayed in the Constitution with it. Mm -hmm. I didn't let them get away with anything. Okay. So they got rid of me. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Uh, go ahead and read that second. Uh, I'll read it. I don't want to waste a lot of time with this here. These are the uh, requirements for the, the positions that are open is the treasurer and public relations director. The qualifications for the positions are as follows. Must be an active member with regular attendance and in good standing. Must be present or past local board member. Must be present or past local board officer member and or have experience for the position. The ability to travel to attend state board meetings and or equipment, a computer, for remote online meetings. Read the requirements, please. This is administrative guide, page 2-18. Now this is in the constitution of the school, the administrative guide. Number six, the qualifications for a state officer shall be based, A, upon their honesty and integrity. None of them should be on the board. <laughs> Go ahead. B, upon their ability to expound the scriptures. That's two. Read. C, upon their obedience to the fundamental principles embodied in this Constitution and bylaws. They don't go along with the Constitution and the bylaws. Go ahead. D, upon their ability to transact the business of this institute in conformity with the law of the state or states in which this institute operates, the United States government and good business practices. These are the qualifications. Read, please. E, upon their membership in this institute. F, neither the state officers board, nor the members, nor the dean shall set any other or additional qualifications for a state officer. Repeat that. Wow. Yeah. Please. F, uh, this is item F. Neither the state officers, neither board, the state officers board, nor the members, nor the members, nor the dean, nor the dean, shall set any other or additional, shall set any other or additional qualifications, qualifications for a state officer. for a state officer. See, and none of those things are in what they're putting down to qualify for the position. Okay. So they're putting down what they want. Yeah. Either they don't know what's in the Constitution, or they just don't want to go along with it. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah. And I know other schools are going to view, uh, 
our lecture yeah. and make them aware of what's in the Constitution and hold your state officers foot to the fire. Yeah. Don't let them get away with these things. Right. See, they've already been going in there trying to change the Constitution once. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, and we held their foot to the fire. Mm -hmm. Now, if we let them get away with it, see, yeah. then they're going to continue to do it. You know? right. So I just wanted to have that, uh, have that read. Thank you. Uh, that's in our administrative guide. See? For IDMR. Yep. Um, First Timothy uh, three sixteen. Uh, I've had someone ask me about the ages and dispensations over here. Dr. Lewis did a good job of talking about it. I want to work with it from a, a different standpoint, and um, we don't work with some of the numbers and the uh, antediluvian age. We want to show you how we come up with these sixteen hundred and fifty six years in this antediluvian age here. That's the, uh, uh, the age before the flood. You see, that Dr. Lewis was saying, uh, this creation, it abides within Yahweh, and, and Yahweh is a consuming fire. And when we're talking about these ages and, and dispensations, uh, this creative age, this uh, uh, antediluvian age, and this post-diluvian age, right on down to this present kingdom age, we're reading about an account of Moses' vision that he had was in, when he was at the top of Mount Sinai. More importantly, um, well, his first, second, and third trip that he was up there. Um, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, what I what I mean by that when Moses went up into the mountain on his on his first well his first trip he was told to set barrels around the mountain. Mm -hmm. See, that's when uh, when he set barrels around the mountain uh, so that the people didn't touch the mountain and then uh, uh, had the people clean up and three days later Yahweh was going to speak the law to Israel from Mount Sinai. See, then Israel said all that Yahweh said we will do. Then uh, on Moses' second major trip, that's the 24th chapter of Exodus. And it's on that second trip uh, uh, where Moses sees the vision of, had his vision of uh, uh of heaven and earth. That's uh, Genesis 1 and, and 1. There in the 24th chapter of Matthew, 24 and 9, uh, or 24 and uh, where it says Moses saw the glory of Yahweh. The glory of Yahweh dwelt upon Mount Sinai and, and the, the cloud covered the mountain <coughs> six days. And, and Dr. Kelly says behind that six days there's a colon. Right. He said and that's where Genesis 1 and 1 goes at. Right. Right. And, and so what I want you to recognize is that when we're uh, reading Genesis uh, 1 and 1 is the account of Moses' of Moses vision. Right. Um, and when Moses goes up on, in the mountain on his third major trip, see the 34th chapter of Ex Exodus, I believe, that's where uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Kelly uh, says that Moses received a recapitulation of his vision. Mm -hmm. and he saw how Yahweh created the uh, heavens and earth right on up to the uh, uh, sixth day, right on up to the seventh day, uh, uh, excuse me, the sixth day, when he saw the woman taken out of the man, they saw them placed in the garden. And what Moses didn't see on the second trip, he didn't see the transgression right, right. Uh, uh, of, of that took place in the garden. Right. He didn't see the transgression on that on the second trip. He said if he would have saw that transgression on that second trip, he said that Moses never would have gotten angry right. and cast down those tables of stone because uh, he would have understood why Israel did what they did. Right. They didn't have any choice to do what they, but what they did because that's what happened with their mother back here uh, in, the, in, the garden, in the Garden of Eden. Where she was deceived by that serpent and that's what happened to Israel uh, back here. Mm -hmm. So then, um, and then after he saw uh, the woman deceived, See, and Adam willingly partaking of the, that fruit and then being driven out of the garden. Say, then Moses uh, saw the generations of mankind mm -hmm. come forth, uh, come forth from Adam. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to take some time and, and kind of work with that a little bit. And I, I think we picked that up in the um, the generations of come forth from Adam. See, and, 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 and someone was trying to pose a question to me, and, and I, I wasn't catching how they were uh, explaining they they having a hard time explaining it, but they were trying to express about the 
300 and something years that was uh, before, uh, uh, before Adam. And, uh, and I know there are writings uh, about a pre-Adamic creation, a creation before Adam. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to express that Dr. Kelly uh, didn't talk about a pre-Adamic creation. Right. Um, or as we talk about prehistorical. He said there's nothing prehistoric. There's nothing before history. Right. And when you're reading Genesis, you're reading the account of Moses' vision. Yeah. And in Moses' vision, Moses is, is taking us right on back. See, into eternity. So there's nothing before right. eternity. There's nothing before eternity. There's nothing before Yahweh. There's nothing before this creative age to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I tried to express that. Um, uh, Dr. Kelly said, um, uh, Enoch didn't write anything. Right. He said, Abraham didn't write anything. Mm -hmm. Isaac, they didn't do any writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But people find these books of Enoch and Abraham and others uh, that have supposedly written something. And Dr. Kelly is letting us know because he had to vision that they didn't write anything. God would not give them nothing to write. Right, right. It's Moses that wrote the account of, of the creation. That's right. So uh, with the time left, let's, let's, let's work with uh, that. And, and I hope it's not confusing to you. Did you want 1 Timothy first? Yes, let's, let's read 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Yes. And without controversy, great is the mystery of holiness. Well, actually, I want to study to show thyself approved. Oh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Yes. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh. So that's what we're studying for. We're not studying to show how smart we are. Yeah, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. Because somebody else can work with numbers and you can't. Somebody can correlate and you can't. We're not trying to. No. Show how smart we are. No. We're trying to share with you what Yahweh has given unto us. Right. Yeah. And likewise, we hope that you share with us what Yahweh has given unto you. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, so we're studying to show ourselves approved unto Yahweh, not unto man. Mm -hmm. Read. Right. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. See, we shouldn't be ashamed about these That's things. Right. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And what we want to do, we want to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay. Now we know the word is Yahweh Elohim. This is the word of Yahweh. But Yahweh isn't divided. See, this is the unity. He, unity. He's not divided. But when he's talking about rightly dividing the word of truth, we're talking about putting things in their proper place. Right. See, and that's what this age of dispensation chart does for us. It put things in their in their proper uh, in their proper place. You know, you have uh, seven ages. Mm -hmm. See, the uh, creative age, the age, uh, the antediluvian age, the post diluvian age, the present kingdom age, you have the kingdom age, and you have the sixth and seventh ages, which are ages to come. Mm -hmm. See, we're in this uh, <coughs> present kingdom age. So you have seven ages and seven uh, disp dispensation. Three of these ages are physical. <coughs> the antediluvian age, the post diluvian age, and the present kingdom age. See, those are physical. Mm -hmm. See, and there are times, see, are years that we can place on those physical ages. Now, the creative age, see, you can't put any time on that. And that's what Dr. Lewis was, was talking about that. See, you, you can't put any time on that. I know we, we say Adam was in the garden for 40 years, for 40 days, but that's according to Moses' vision. Right. See, if you look at the uh, creative age here, you see the Garden of Eden, See, it's under the creative age. Yeah. See, it's not under the antediluvian age. Mm -hmm. It's in the creative age. Yeah. And in that creative age, there's, that's the realm of eternity. There's no time there. Right. See, there's no day, there's no night in that creative age. That's the same age, see, that the angel, the angelic creation is in. There's no time there. See, right. so, so you, you can't say Adam was, the only reason you say Adam was in the garden for 40 days is because of the vision that Moses had. Right. And we understand the vision that he had, see, by using that pattern, yeah. see, seeing that uh, uh, Adam was created on the, on the, the sixth day mm -hmm. uh, of, the, of, his vi of, of Moses' vision, and then he's placed in the garden, see, at rest on that Sabbath day, then the next 33 days, Adam is at rest in the garden. This is according to Moses' vision. He's at rest in the garden. Right. See, and then, uh, see, in, in, in this garden, see, what, 
we're not conscious of a lot of times because we're looking at a physical garden here that this is in the realm of eternity. This is not in the realm of time. It's in the realm of eternity. See, so Moses sees according to his vision, he sees Adam at rest in the garden. See, then for the next 33 days, he's receiving instructions on how to build the tabernacle. So Mo, Adam is at rest during those 33 days. Mm -hmm. See, then on his second trip up, the Yahweh gives him a recapitulation and brings him right on back up to where Adam and Eve are at rest in the garden, see. And that completes the 40 days that Adam is in the garden according to Moses' vision. See, but at that garden, I want to point out again, see, it's in the realm of eternity. See, it's not in the it's not in the realm of time. See, time didn't begin, see, until Adam was driven out of the garden. See, the sun wasn't rising and setting, see, when uh, Adam was in the garden. See, there was no day and, and night when Adam was in the garden. That didn't begin until he was driven out of the garden. So it's it's this realm of eternity that has uh, man science so confused because there are uh, uh, what's the word they are, are, are trying to carbon date things and the more they carbon date the older they find out yeah. that it is mm -hmm. see because it all took place in the realm of eternity mm -hmm. see and that's the angelic the creative age and that's not a that's not a physical age see mm -hmm. see and then once these three ages physical ages run their course mm -hmm. yeah. see then we have the kingdom age see uh, you have the kingdom age, see, that's not a physical age. Right. See, and those ages to come, see, mm -hmm. those aren't physical ages. Right. So you have three physical ages. So you have no idea once this creation runs its course, yeah. see, see, and we're ushered into that uh, mm -hmm. kingdom age, see, this mortal shall put on immortality, right. see. You don't know how long that's going right. to be. All right. See, we know this age is a... Uh, supposed to be a short age. This age was a long age, some 2,377 years. The antediluvian age was a short age, some 1,656 years. See? We're right now, and just using the numbers that we have, this is 2,024. So this is a long age. Now you have to do the math on that to bring us down to uh, the, the correct date and time. See? Um, but once this age... Uh, ends and run this course, see, and this mortal puts on immortality, see, we receive that immortal glorified body because as the founder said right now, we have an eternal spirit. If you've received the Holy Spirit in you, see, then you have an eternal glorified spirit in a physical body. And he said the two don't go together. So you need an immortal body to go along with that immortal spirit that's in us. See, and that's what we receive at the revelation of Yahshua from heaven. We'll, re we'll receive that immortal glorified body, or you're going to receive a damnable body. See, but either one, see, this flesh and blood can't enter to the kingdom, and neither flesh and blood are going to be tormented, see, throughout eternity. You need a body fit for destruction, see, and you got to receive a body likened unto those angels. See, the, uh, 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 an incorporeal body. See, and so that's what we'll receive at the uh, close of this age, and he said, then we'll be learning in ages to come. Mm -hmm. See, now we can't put any time on these ages, but during this time, he said, now we're gonna, we won't have the hindrance of the satanic spirit, see, in this next age. Yeah. See, or, or in the age following that, we won't have the hindrance right. of him. So we'll, we'll be learning without this physical body, and we'll be learning without uh, the hindrance of the satanic spirit. Mm -hmm. See, right. But we know that this, this fifth, sixth, and seventh age, they have to come to an end. Yeah. See, we have ending right here. See, they, they have to come to an end, but there's no time on it, just right. like you didn't have any time back here in the creative age. And then the founder said, now once this runs its course, he said, then Yahweh, see, because everything can be subject back unto the Father, that the yeah. Father might be all in all. He said, then Yahweh will decide what he'll do next, see. So it has to come to an end, but there's no idea of any time, because we'd be... Uh, 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 without time, see, there won't be no rising and setting of the sun. That's our timekeeper. So there won't be no rising and setting of the sun and no moon. He said, because the Lamb, see, He's the light thereof. See, we'll be learning of Him without the hindrance of, of, of this physical body. Okay. So then, uh, the angelic creation, see, see, we know that it was an angelic creation because when Moses received his instructions on how to build the tabernacle, see, Moses wrote about some angels. 
See, he put those angels, see, he was told to put them on the veil of the tabernacle. So he saw some angels right. in his vision. See? Right. That's that angelic creation. See, then the physical creation, that's what this dotted line is showing. So it's showing that the physical physical creation was drawn right out of the angelic creation. See, and all of that is in the uh, the creative age. See, that's an age without time. See, and, and all these ages, yeah. see, all of them abide within Yahweh, yeah. or they abide within the realm see, of eternity. That's what this cloud symbolizes. See, Yahweh, he's a consuming fire, and that's why it's painted red, see, because Yahweh is a consuming fire. And we're, we're abiding right within him. And I don't know if Dr. Buffington would always use the expression, see, that See that what y'all always doing? He just turning the real stat up. See, we're we're right within that fire now. Right. Yeah. See, never been outside of y'all. We've right. never been outside of the real right. of eternity. See, we're dwelling uh, right within Him. See, so that's what they're showing. See, all these ages. See, the creative age. See, the uh, ante, post, present, the kingdom age, and those ages to come. See, they're all abiding right within. Yahweh. And see, once it's run its course, see, then everything has to be subject back unto the Son. See. Uh, that's Yahshua the Messiah, then he's subject back unto the Father, mm -hmm. see that the Father might be all in all. That's water, ice going to water, yeah. see, and then water going right on back into that yeah. gaseous state, see that the Father yeah. might be all in all. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have the angelic creation and we have the physical creation, see, and it's in this physical creation, see, uh, that Adam was uh, uh, formed. Uh, and placed in a garden, and saying that, like Doctor uh, Lewis had mentioned, see when Lucifer, when he was cast out of heaven, see he yeah. was cast into the ethereal, cast into the ethereal darkness, see that surrounded the unfinished earth plane, mm -hmm. see, and he didn't enter the earth plane, he didn't enter uh, the earth plane or this physical creation, he didn't enter in until after Yahweh formed Adam from the dust of the ground, see. Now once he formed Adam from the dust of the ground, see, and placed Adam in the garden, see. Then Lucifer could enter into the earth plane. Because had he been in the earth plane before Yahweh formed Adam from the dust of the ground, see, then Adam would have been created or in sin. Because the presence of Lucifer, see, now that's sin. See, so Adam had to be created without sin because he's made in the image of likeness of Yahweh Elohim. See, and he who had no sin, see, he was made to be sin for us. So Adam being a, a an image of him that was to come, see, that Adam couldn't uh, have any sin, see, and, and, and he had to come forth from a virgin, see, and, and with Lucifer in the earth plane, see, Mother Earth would no longer be a virgin, see, she'd have been contaminated, you see, so she couldn't, so yeah. Satan was in that ethereal darkness, see, that surrounded the unfinished earth plane, so then, uh, once Adam was in the, in the Garden of Eden, see, that's where Yahweh gave Adam the, the commandment, see, to be fruitful and multiply. Now that Garden of Eden, see, that's before this antediluvian age, see. Now, that's typifying heaven, mm -hmm. see. And the commandment is given to Adam, see, uh, to be fruitful and multiply, see, and replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. And when people hear that replenish, see, that, that implies that then there was life before Adam in order for him to replenish the earth. But they don't recall or don't know that they're reading the account of Moses' vision. Mm -hmm. See, in Moses' vision, Moses sees uh, the earth inhabited. He's a part of the earth. Mm -hmm. See, but when he has that vision, see, then the earth becomes without shape and form. See, in that vision, see, in the beginning it was without shape and form, but now Moses sees it become without shape and form, and that darkness upon the face of the deep. So then he has he, he hears the commandment given to Adam see, to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So that's why uh, uh, Moses sees that in the, in, in the vision. So that can't happen. That cannot happen, see, as long as Adam is in the garden. It can't happen because the garden of Eden is likened unto heaven. See? And Adam and, and, and flesh and blood, see, that's in the most holy place. See? see, and flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. See, so you see two physical beings there. See, but they're not conscious, see, of the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's why I yeah. said that they saw one another's nakedness and they were not ashamed. Right. See, because their eyes are closed to the flesh yeah. and they're open to the spirit. Right. See, and their eyes weren't open to the flesh until after they 
partook of the tree that Yahweh told them not to partake of. And once they done that, they became disobedient to the commandment of Yahweh. Then it says their eyes are open. See, now, now he's become carnal minded. Mm. See, before touching the fruit of the tree, he's not carnal minded. Right. See, they don't see the flesh. He saw the animals. He named the animals. He saw the fruit on the tree. They saw one another's nakedness, but they were not ashamed. Right. But Yahweh said, the day you touch it, that, that tree, you will surely die. Right. And when Adam touched that fruit that his wife brought to him, see, when she partook of it, nothing happened. See, but when she gave it to her husband and he touched it, see, then all of a sudden their eyes are open. Mm -hmm. See, now what happened is they died instantaneously, just as Yahweh said, the day you touch it, you will surely die. And where he died at, he died in his conscience. Right. He died in his heart. See, he became condemned, yeah. see, or depraved yeah. in his soul. Yeah. Now, that's the death that he died, where some ministers say that God lied and the devil told the truth. <laughs> see, and I have the record of it, see. Because God said the day you touch it, you will die. And Adam lived to be 930 years old. See, God lied, and the devil said you will not surely die. And the devil told the truth. Now, they didn't know the difference between life and death. Yeah. And I dare to say that I didn't know. See, I right. thought I knew what life and death was. See, but I didn't know until this vision. See, when Adam touched the fruit of the tree, see, the man is dead in his conscience. Yeah. See, and that right. death that Adam died passed upon me. It passed upon, upon you. Mm -hmm. You see, so we're dead in our conscience. We were dead in our heart. See, dead in our mind. See, because dead in our soul. See, until uh, Yahweh, Yahshua come in. And fulfill that and, and, and redeem the man, see. So when Adam had his offspring, see, then Adam, see, Adam was made in the image and likeness of Yahweh Elohim. But when Adam bore offspring, they were made in his image, after his likeness. So since Adam had a carnal mind, see, then all his children's carnal mind. See, we all have to come in after the image of our father, see, and that's Adam. See, and the commandment was, see, to be fruitful and multiply, see. And replenish the earth. Well, see, that can't happen in the garden because that's life unto heaven. And flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. See, so in order for the man to be fruitful to multiply, then he's got to be driven out. See, when he, once he's driven out, see, in his eye, when his eyes is open and he sees his wife, see, now his desire is to his wife. So once he's driven out of the garden, now Adam can be fruitful and multiply, see, and start bringing forth offspring. See, so that's what we want to pick that up at uh, there in Genesis, I think the fifth chapter maybe. You know, we won't have time to read it all, right. uh, but I, I have them kind of marked off uh, at each one of the births there. Genesis 5 verse 1. Thank you. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that Elohim created man, in the likeness of Elohim made he him. Male and female created See, That day, him. that was a, the day of eternity. That's what he created the man at. Mm -hmm. In the likeness of Elohim made he him. Male and female created he them mm -hmm. and blessed them yes. and called their name Adam. In they the called him Adam and Eve, he called him Adam. Mm -hmm. Read. In the day when they were created. Go ahead, please. And Adam lived a a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after Now his Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness. Go ahead. After his image and called his name Seth. Mm -hmm. And Seth lived a hundred now, now when you go on to read there, and I'm just going to mention this, it said Adam begat sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. right. Because people will read and they'll say, well, where did Cain get a wife from? <coughs> right. It was his own sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But all you read about is the birth of the eldest son. He had sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. See, it wasn't until he was 130 years old when he had a son. And he called his name Seth. 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 In the days of Adam, after he'd begotten Seth, now Seth years. was born after Cain had slew Abel. Right. right. Mm -hmm. See, so you have some time that had already passed. Mm -hmm. See, and the earth has already been peopled, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you only read about uh, Cain and Abel and Seth. Mm -hmm. But he had sons and daughters. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead. And Adam lived 130, oh, uh, in the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and so he begat sons and daughters. He was 130 years old when Seth was born. Right. right. Go ahead. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 mm -hmm. years, and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. Seth lived 105 years, and his firstborn son was Enos. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And Enos lived 90 years and begat Canaan. Now, if we could just skip over the, I just really, at this point, yeah. just the, the year of the, the eldest son born. Okay. So Enos um, was 105 years old when he begat Canaan. Go ahead. No. It was uh, Adam being 130 when he had Seth, right. and right. Seth was 105 when he had So Seth was, Seth was born in the year 100, 130. See, right. That's the year Seth was born. Right. In the year 130. Then Seth begot Enos when he was 105 years old. Right. Go ahead. And Enos lived 90 years and begat Canaan. Go ahead. Put the 90 down. I'm going to just walk over here. Go ahead. Uh, and Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahalalel. Now, Canaan was 70 years old when Mahalalel was born. Now, the, counted, the, the generation is counted from the oldest son. And when I have a son... My oldest son. Mm -hmm. And when he has a son, see, that's how the generation is counted. So it's not counting the, the year of each one of them that are born. Mm -hmm. But it's the generation of the firstborn. Go ahead. 16, uh, 15 verse. And Mahalalel lived 60 and 5 years and begat Jared. So Mahalalel lived 65 years and Jared was born. 18th verse, and Jared lived 160 and two years, and he begat Enoch. And at 162 years old, Jared gave birth, or his wife gave birth to Enoch. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 21st verse, and Enoch lived 60 and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch lived 65 years, he was 65 years old when Methuselah was born. Now, well, go ahead. And Methuselah lived an hundred eighty and seven years and begat Lamech. So Methuselah, when he was 187 years old, mm -hmm. that's when Lamech was born. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean there weren't any daughters born during that time, right, right. but you're reading about the 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 first the first son. Right. Go ahead. Um, Twenty-eight verse. And Lamech lived 180 and two years and begat a son. And he lived 182 years old and he begat a son. And he called his name Noah. And he called that son name Noah. Mm -hmm. now he called him Noah because he was going to comfort the people concerning the work and the toil of their hands. See, this Noah was a type of the shadow of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. So I want to add these up before we go any further. So 72 is, ni 72 is 9, 5 is 14, 2 is 16, 21, 26, put the 2 up there, right? 14, 2, 3 is 5, and 9 is 14, and 7 is 21, am I right? All right, 6 is 28. Six is 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. And add six to that. 33. 33. Add six to that. 39. And add eight to that. 47. And add eight to that. 55. Carry the one. And this is easy. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm, I said carry the five. Thanks for keeping me, keeping me straight. <laughs> See y'all? Follow with me. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
That's 1,056 years when Noah is born. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at, at the birth of Noah. He's born in the year 1056. Now this age, this first age was, is 1,656 years long. Go ahead and read, please. Genesis 7, 11. So we need another 600 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Genesis 7, verse 11. And in the 600 year of Noah's life. Now by the time Noah was 600 years old, yeah. he had three sons. Sam, Ham, and Japheth. You don't read about any daughters. No. But they were born. But you're reading about the sons. Sam, Ham, and Japheth. Somebody got to help produce children, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have Sam, Ham, and Japheth was born uh, within that uh, 600 years of Noah's life. Go ahead. Just 7-11. In the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Mm. So when Yahweh destroyed the world, so he gave Noah the vision that he was going to destroy the world with water. With water. And he said, uh, let man's days be 120 years, I believe it was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, And during that 120 year time, that's when Noah is building the ark according to the divine instructions that he received from, uh, from Yahweh. See, and, and, and Yahweh told him, He's going to destroy the world with water. And there were many people that believed Noah, followed Noah. See, uh, but they just began to fall off because they had never seen rain fall from the sky. Right. See, so when Noah was 600 years old, see, then that vision that Yahweh gave Noah, it came to pass. See, in the 600 years of Noah's life, see, the windows of the floodgates of heaven open up and the fountains of the deep deep open up, and Yahweh destroyed the world uh, with water. See? And that brought this first age to an end. See? Now, Yahweh said over in Isaiah, he declared the end right from the very beginning. That's right. See? So when you read about the beginning of the creation, you read about the spirit of Yahweh Elohim moving upon the face of the deep. See, and, and Dr. Kelly said what he's doing, he's impregnating Mother Earth. It's on this chart right here. He's impregnating Mother Earth, see, with the seed of life. See, you have the earth inundated in water. See, so it came in by water. Mm -hmm. And what Yahweh did, see, declared the end from the beginning, see, then the world was destroyed, mm -hmm. see, with water. See, and that, that accounts for the 1,656 years, see, from the fall of Adam, see, down to the um, to the flood of, of Noah. Mm -hmm. See, now we still have the 2,377 years, and there's just no way <laughs> that we can talk about that, you know. Uh, but hopefully we'll get a chance to, to talk about that another time. And, and another thing I want to point out, too, that I, I, I hope to get a chance to talk about also is about that um, Hebrews 8.22, where it says, Now, oh, without the shedding of blood... See, there's no remission of sin. Mm -hmm. See, and also we want to add to where we talk about the scapegoat. See, find out what a, a, a scapegoat is. See, a scapegoat is somebody that takes the blame for somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's what Yahshua did. See, he was our scapegoat. See, you're not the scapegoat. See, he's the scapegoat. And he who had no sin was made to be sin for you and I. So there's a few things that uh, uh, we'd like to... to to go in a little bit more uh, for you to add to our understanding and perhaps with some things that you, you just don't know about already. Uh, so thank you for uh, giving me a chance to uh, address the assembly and I'll, I'll yield the floor.
Thank you, Dr. Simmons. Now it's an honor. Now where are we going to <laughs> we like that's right. We like to cordially invite all our visitors and friends to return and study with us. Classes are held every Tuesday and Thursday from 7.30 p.m. till 9.30 p.m. and on Sundays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at 308 Montgomery Avenue. Now will the class please stand to be led in benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both before all times, and now, and ever. Let the class say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.